In this short tutorial, we're going to have a look at the Johns Hopkins University Truss Simulator. I'm going to keep it really simple, just looking at what one might do if one was a middle school or high school student wanting to investigate uh, simulations for designs that they might want to use in a model bridge building competition. And so, as I said, keeping it simple, I like to begin with a pre-built truss. So up at the top here on the dashboard, pre-built truss, click on number three and you will get a Warren truss. Now in my competitions, I have a single load at the bottom of the bridge in the center. The bridge that we start off here has three loads. So I'm going to take two of them away. And the way to do that um, is I go up to where it says delete, click single, go down to the bottom of the arrow which denotes the force at number one and click, it disappears. Then to three, do the same thing, click, it disappears. And now I'm left with two Newtons load in the center of the bridge. Now I'm going to adjust that to make it 10 Newtons. I'll explain why in a minute. So I go to move again um, at the top and I can move nodes and I can move forces. I click on force, go back down to the arrow, click and let go and then drag up and click again. I've now got 10 Newtons. The reason for this is that it just helps me to see uh, and visualize the other forces uh, clearly once I have a look at the forces on the bridge. So let's do the solve and click during move. I'll explain why in a minute. So now we see that um, all the forces shown in Newtons are on the various members. In red, members under compression, and in blue, members under tension. You can see here that the force on the top member, topmost member in the middle, is the greatest of all the forces on the bridge. Now because I clicked solve during move, I can adjust the position of these um, nodes and members and see what effect it has on the forces. Take a look at this for instance. I'm going to hover over seven and click once and then move my mouse and dr I'm dragging it and then click on it again. I'm going to do that now for each of these nodes. Click, drag down, click. Click on six, drag down, click. Click on five, drag down and click. I still have a Warren truss which is what I started out with uh, but notice that the force over here, for instance, particularly has got much higher, 13.33. It's interesting to see then that if you change the height of the bridge, you also change the forces being exerted. If I click pre-built truss 3 again, it takes me back to the beginning. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete these nodes at the top just to play around with this a little bit. So I go to delete single click. Click on 8, deletes it. Click on 7, deletes it. Click on 6, deletes it. Click on 5, deletes it. Right, now I'm going to add in some nodes. Click add node. I'm going to put one directly above number 2, directly above number 1, halfway between. And I'm going to do the same for this side, directly above number three, here, directly underneath that, directly underneath that one. I'm going to put another node here, another one here, another one here, another one here. Now to add some members. So add member. I can add a cord all the way across from 12 to 14 in one go. And then I click 14, 
drag, click 4. Click 12, drag, click 0. Now I'm going to put some verticals in. Click 12, drag 13. Click 6, drag 1. You can work the other way around. Click 11, up to 7. Doesn't matter which way you drag. I'm going to make this into a Pratt bridge. Your diagonals go this way. So the two halves of the bridge are mirror images. That's symmetry. In fact, normally the two halves of a bridge, left and right of center, are in symmetry. Um, I want to get rid of these two forces here. So delete, single, click, click, and move force. And I want to make it 10. There it is. And for a Pratt truss, here are all the forces. You've got 10 as the greatest force anywhere around here. Let's have a look what happens if I increase the height of the bridge. Right, uh, the forces along the top cord between each node reduced. Interesting. Of course, what you've got to remember is, as you do that, the, the diagonal members get longer. So you've got a force here that's over a longer distance, so it's more likely to buckle. You can do all sorts of different things. Hmm, that's interesting. Have a look at those forces there. So this would be a Pratt bridge with a kind of a, an arch or semi-arch aspect to it. Have fun playing with different bridges, different permutations, different ideas. Look up how trusses, H-O-W-E, how truss, which is similar to a Pratt truss, except that the diagonals go the other way and see how that stands up, um, see if there's any difference between a Pratt and a How. Play around with the, the top chord arches, things like that. Um, it's pretty much limitless in what you can do. And then start to apply it to your actual bridges as you construct them. Happy bridge building!